good morning. I'm uh, Martin Platt, BBC Africa. I've certainly seen some faces in here that I know and many of whom I like. This will be, in a, in a sense, this will be in, in two halves. Uh, we will say just a little bit on this side, and then we'll be going over to Juba to hear what they have to say, and we've got a, a really excellent uh, line-up there. And then at about 12 o'clock, we'll, we'll come back here and have a question and answer session and uh, pick it up from here. Let me just uh, introduce then uh, Sara Pantiliano here, who was with the United Nations in Sudan, particularly working on post-conflict resolution in the Nuba Mountains. Um, yes, perhaps yeah. work still to be done. Um, and uh, if you wouldn't mind, perhaps um, Ambassador uh, if McPhail, if you wouldn't mind introducing your guests in Juba. Thank you very much. Uh, we heard you say earlier that we have an excellent lineup here. Uh, we do indeed have a star studded cast. Uh, I'm fortunate to be joined here with going from my immediate right. Uh, can you see us? Indeed, we yes, can. Yes. Right. Um, we have Agri Tisa Sabuni, who is the economic advisor to the president. <laughs> and beyond him, we have Archbishop Daniel Dengbul, who is the Episcopal Archbishop for Sudan and South Sudan. And beyond him, we have Doc Dr. Luca Byung Deng Kuo, who is the co chair of the Abye Joint Oversight Committee. I've just come back from uh, South Sudan. I arrived back on uh, Saturday morning. And I must say, I was struck by the importance of the the occasion, I mean, it's, it's always easy to say that the moments are historic, but I definitely think this is one of them. I mean, the, the decisions that are made early on in the life of a country have an indelible, make an indelible mark on that country and can be seen many, many years later. And I'm sure everyone is aware of the extraordinary situation that now prevails with the oil having been cut off, with the crisis on the border, with all the unresolved issues there, with something like 100,000 refugees having fled from the north into the south, and with the fate of perhaps half a million, three quarters of a million southerners who are around the capital, around Khartoum, still in the balance. Um, discussions over the last few days uh, have, of course, been taking place between North and South Sudan, and we will see what the, their, their very conflicting uh, reports on what that produced. But the situation is certainly extremely uh, fluid and tense. Um, perhaps it would be best, rather than waiting any longer, uh, if we went over to Juba and asked you to uh, take things perhaps until for the next three quarters of an hour, if that's all right. <laughs> 